Hello guys, uh, in this video we will be talking about the second module uh, of discussing about the NMR spectroscopy and this is about the introduction to NMR spectroscopy. Now what is NMR spectroscopy? NMR is an abbreviation of nuclear magnetic resonance. It involves three different parts. First one is the nucleus, which is the nucleus including proton and neutron inside the nucleus of an atom. Second one is a magnetic, that means an external magnetic field must be applied. Third one is a resonance, that means the resonance effect of uh, the atomic level. Okay. Now NMR spectroscopy is an absorption process that involves spinning of nuclei in an external magnetic field. It has many advantages such as allocating particular atom in a molecule. Second thing is the structural identification of the molecule and the measuring ratio of comp uh, components in a mixture and also defining the relative configuration of the molecule inside, uh, the, inside the solution. Okay. Now here we can find uh, the picture of an NMR uh, spectroscopy. Okay. So this is the NMR console, this is the magnetic field and all these things are working and this is the chair where you can sit and look at the data. Okay. Now let us move on to the nuclear spin. Now uh, a magnetic property of nuclei. All nuclei carry a positive charge but only some have a charge spin on the nuclear axis which cause a magnetic dipole along the axis therefore possess an angular momentum. The angular momentum of spinning charge is described in term of spin quantum number which is denoted with I and the nuclei behave themselves like magnetic bars but in this case none of this I never uh, uh, equals not equals to zero. Okay. Now here we can find here uh, external magnetic field. When the external magnetic field is applied, nuclear magnets can orient themselves in 2i plus 1 states. i means, remember, spin quantum number state. Uh, it will move on to the 2i plus 1 quantum number state, spin state. Where m in this case is a magnetic quantum number. Okay. Now it means like i, i uh, plus i. Uh, plus i minus 1 plus i minus 2 plus i minus 10 all these things will go on. The relationship of nuclei and magnetic properties are given here. So if the atomic mass is odd, atomic number can be odd or even. Uh, example like hydrogen, carbon, fluorine and phosphorus. A uh, spin quantum number here will be half uh, and as a result magnetic quantum number will be plus half and minus half and the allowed spin remember 2i plus 1 so 2 into plus uh, 2 into half plus 1 means 2 so that is definitely NMR active for example say if the atomic mass even an atomic number is odd like hydrogen uh, deuterium and nitrogen 14 here the spin quantum number will be 1 so the magnetic quantum number will be plus 1 0 and minus 1 and the allowed spin will be 2 into 1 plus 1 that is 3 it must be NMR active now uh, if the nuclear uh, atomic mass is even as well as the atomic number is even like C12, O16, S32 spin quantum number will be 0 because both the cases atomic mass and atomic number is equals to 0 uh, equals to same actually not 0 magnetic quantum number will be 0 so the allowed spin state will be 1 now any of the molecule if they have any of the atom for example if they have uh, the allowed spin state only one must not be NMR active so here uh, as this C12, O16 and S32 are not sh are showing only one allowed spin state they will be NMR inactive here you can see in this picture if there is no external field the magnetic moment protons are randomly oriented like this here b0 equals b theta equals to 0 in this case okay uh, b0 equals to 0 anyways if the external magnetic field is applied which is b0 in this case the protons orient themselves uh, depending upon the spin it can be plus half uh, uh, are parallel and some are uh, can be some can be minus half which are the anti parallel that means they against the applied magnetic field orientation some, uh, some would be the against the applied magnetic field. So if the magnetic field orients in this direction, in this up 
upright direction some of them are aligned parallel some of them are aligned anti parallel or against those which are placed anti parallel are called minus half spin and those which are placed in a parallel direction having the plus half spin okay now uh, for h1 and c13 nuclei uh, when the external magnetic field b0 is applied only two orientations are allowed nuclei with spin plus half are parallel to b0 and nuclei with spin minus half are anti parallel to b0 now the energy difference between allowed nuclear spin states for h1 nuclei it depends on the strength of the external magnetic field b0 according to the equation now any time the energy difference must depend on the energy or the magnetic field that are applied from the outside here del e equals to gamma h b0 divided by 2 pi here g is the gyromagnetic ratio and h is the planck's constant for a proton if the applied magnetic field has a strength of approximately 1.41 t the difference in energy between two spin states uh, that is here indicated like 2.39 to 10 to the power minus 2 kilojoule per mole radiation with a frequency of about 60 hertz corresponding to the energy difference is ob observed don't uh, try to memor memorize all these things just uh, i just read uh, because it is standing here okay anyways now uh, focus on to this picture now the energy you can find here if uh, the energy difference lies between the 60, 60 megahertz here which is uh, the frequency state uh, it, it completely depends on the external field if we change this external field which is denoted with the Tesla field if we change this external field uh, then this energy difference will vary from one, one from one place to another okay this is a very important term this is a very very important thing about NMR. Now let us talk about a basic thing of NMR spectrometer. Now first thing is the components of an NMR spectrometer. Uh, in an NMR, NMR spectrometer there are four important components. One is the NMR powerful magnet, second one is the NMR probe, third one is the NMR console and the fourth one is the computer workstation or controller software as you can see in this picture. Now here the NMR console is made up with three different uh, things one is a radio frequency generator second one is a radio frequency detector and the third one is the signal amplifier because we need the complete collaboration of uh, all these three units to finally have a fully functional NMR spectro uh, spectrograph okay now here in this picture uh, we believe that this is the console and workstation is uh, this one I believe and magnets uh, I don't actually focus on this magnet here <laughs> this is uh, I think this is the magnet here this is the sample here and probe and bore so this is the probe this is the bore I think uh, it is fine right? Uh, uh, this thing is wrong and this thing is also so this is the board this is a magnet anyways uh, okay so these are the system okay uh, now let's move on now this is the wave NMR spectrometer okay at the beginning an NMR spectrometer uses sweep mode of magnification field now process of measurements can be have various different process first is the various of swift magnetic field strength in generated by the powerful magnet second one is a sample is irradiated with a radio frequency of a constant frequency third process a uh, third step is when the magnetic field reaches the correct strength the nuclei absorbs energy and the resonance occurs this is the most important part if we if you are continuously giving the energy from the uh, giving the magnetic field uh, the energy as a magnetic field uh, all of this energy are not responsible for the absorption only a particular uh, type of energy will uh, a will uh, finally help this nucleus to absorb it and finally the nucleus will absorb the energy and resonance will occur 
the absorption causes a tiny electrical current to flow in the receiver coil surrounding the sample as you can see in this picture this is the receiver coil surrounding the sample as soon as uh, this sample is getting uh, some absorption this coil will get the signal and the instrument then amplifies the signal and finally it will feed on to the detector and detector can detect it and then finally it, it will show uh, onto the computer screen okay now here uh, is the Fourier transfer NMR spectrometer in modern NMR spectrometer the instrument you are use a pulse of radio frequency the radio frequency generator is turned on and off very quickly generating a pulse similar to the shown in the figure A the pulse contains a range of frequencies centered about the fundamental as shown in the picture okay so just this is a quick pulse in the f in the former uh, type of spectrophotometry what we can see the frequency of pulse can be generated in this way but in case of this Fourier transform the pulse is uh, quickly on and off process of measurement utilizing this uh, Fourier transform NMR spectrometer is the first is the magnetic field is held constant second step is the sample is eradicated with a uh, irradiated uh, with a short pulse like approximately 10 to the power 5 uh, 10 to the power minus 5 second of radio frequency energy third step is the radio frequency energy flips the spin of all the susceptible nucleus simultaneously the fourth and the uh, fourth one is when the pulse is disconnected the excited nuclei begin to lose their excitation energy as you can see in this diagram this is at the beginning of the uh, when the pulse hit the sample then uh, it absorbs the energy and detector shows very intense peak then the intensity of the peak is getting uh, decreased as a uh, they're losing the energy okay this is the emission and this emission is called the free induction decay or FID signal as we see in this case this is the starting of the uh, hitting the pulse and this is as the time pass on uh, the energy uh, or, or the emitted energy is getting decreased and the fifth step is the intensity of the FID decays with the time and fall to zero as nuclei return to their equilibrium state this is the most important part probably the most important part to understand about the NMR so l just listen very carefully first you, we, are, we are just continuously applying the field and uh, after adding this pulse few amount of pulse will uh, simultaneously hit onto the molecule and the atom will be turned on to its very very much excited form then the uh, then it will start to emit uh, the energy and it will come it will go down towards the equilibrium state as you can see here okay as we are go through the time okay the signal did not decay in intensity it would appear as sine or cosine wave of constant intensity as you can see in this picture okay remember the signal did not decay in the intensity okay it would appear as decaying a computer records the intensity versus the time frequency a uh, time information and uses the Fourier transform to convert the information to intensity versus frequency domain and finally we will have the graph of uh, the intensity over the frequency after the Fourier transformation and then we can see it okay so this is the FT NMR spectrophotometer FT NMR means a Fourier transform uh, NMR spectrophotometer again magnets are placed there and all the different things are placed there we just need to look at it okay the particular advantage of N FT NMR spectrometer is that low sample is required for this kind of spectrophotometry second thing is that 5 to 10 minutes are required to scan and record a spectrophotometry scan a pulse experiment is much faster a few seconds a large number of spectra can be recorded and digitally summed to give an average spectrum. Instrumental electronic noise is random and partially cancelled out with the help of modern day technologies. And fifth one is a sample signal is acquired, uh, accumulated and become much stronger relative to the noise than those of the single spectrum. How does the NMR spectrum look like? After understanding NMR spectrometers and their components, someone may want to know what the result from the NMR spectrometer is. This is the example of NMR spectrum, which is the spectrum of C9H10NO2, as you can see here. The chemical shift occurs 
in different ppm concentrations we can find the nmr spectrum in different level okay now let us talk about the nmr spectra in detail a peak position in the nmr spectrum the signals in different magnetic fields show different position in hertz which is the frequency domain the term chemical shift is introduced to eliminate the changing position due to the shift in the strength of magnetic field consider the table below here if we utilize the ch3br then the strength of the field can be 1.41 tesla or it can be 2.35 tesla in the 1.41 tesla the operating frequency is 60 position signal 162 and the chemical shift will be 2.70 on the other hand if we utilize the strength of the field 2.35 tesla operating frequency will be 100 the position signal will be 270 but at the end the chemical shift remains same which is the 2.70 ppm now the chemical shift is the shift in parts per million of an nmr signal from the signal of tms if signal is shifted towards the left on the chart paper it is shifted down field or low magnetic field or if the signal is shif shifted towards the right on the chart paper it is shifted up, up field or high magnetic field okay so up field or high magnetic field and down field or low magnetic field now if we are having the uh, if it shifted towards down field it will have the high frequency uh, so it have the low frequency anyways uh, so this is the reference compound the reference compound that are hugely introduced uh, in this NMR spectroscopy is uh, called the TMS or tetramethylsilene why tetramethylsilene? now tetramethylsilene is uh, uh, give the signal which is assigned to be uh, the 0 ppm why because TMS is chosen initially the protons of its methyl groups are more de-shielded than those of other known compounds at that time no compounds which had better shield hydrogen than TMS were known so TMS must give the 0 ppm value for the chemical shift now if we utilize H1 NMR spectrum of 1,4 dimethyl benzene it, it, in a given molecule some hydrogen possess a more electron density and some possess less electron density therefore they absorb energy at different frequencies and then they are recorded at different positions here you can find the chemical shift at 7.2 ppm the signal is coming from HB uh, that means these regions these hydrogen regions and at the chemical shift uh, of 2.3 ppm which is uh, here 2.3 ppm it is coming from HA that means the hydrogen of CH3 group the field strength is highly dependent on the magnetic environment of each pro proton the magnetic environment depends on the magnetic field generated by its own electrons which is circulating electrons and the magnetic field resulted from other nearby protons or other nucleus now integration of peak area the relative magnitudes of the signal are helpful in the assignment of the number of protons in each group the areas of the signal are plotted and recorded as an integ integral curve for example here from the integration calculate the number of the hydrogen and carbon here so from the integration we can find here the total integration is 88 millimeter and corresponds to the 10 hydrogen so the chemical shift at 7.25 uh, the number of hydrogens will be 5 chemical shift at 5.10 the number of hydrogen will be 2 and chemical shift as 2.14 the hydrogen number will be 3 the calculation is given here at this position like this from the total integration we can find this calculation ok that's about uh, the NMR uh, introduction and I hope this will help you